Good morning, champions. Happy Monday. Welcome to the 7 of Ask Me Anything series. I hope you had a wonderful weekend and ready to make the best of this new week. I am super excited to be back. Like I said, this is a 31 day challenge to come live every day and just share tips and things to help you ensure that you can fully build your non-profit on a profitable and sustainable foundation. For those that are new to me, my name is Omotala the Great. I am the lead consultant here at The Funding Magnet and our mission for 2022 is to aid and support a thousand non-profits to fully fund their budget. And we do that through trainings, workshop, classes and courses that we provide and also one-on-one um, -on -one services um, for those that need that as well. And just to give a little bit of a background, I've been in the nonprofit world for more than 10 years now. I also started a nonprofit in 2012 and I know what it feels like to have a passion and a purpose and to want to make a difference in your community. And so I have that background and I use that when I work with clients and when I work with the student that I get the opportunity to train through my classes and courses as well. And so we exist as a farm to ensure that we can help you and support the work that you're doing. We know that it can be lonely to be a champion to want to do good because sometimes it might be like a thankless job, but our goal is to support and aid you because research have shown over and over again, more than 50% of nonprofit closed down within 12 months of startup and at least 30% closed down in the first 10 years this was not, not going to be your story. And so that is why we exist, so that you can continue to thrive. You can build your organization on this profitable and sustainable foundation. And so for the past few days, I've been talking about different funding stream that you can activate as a nonprofit. This is because this is one of the most frequently asked questions. How do I fund my nonprofit? How do I fund my project? And so I am going down and explaining and breaking down different kind of funding stream that you can activate for your nonprofit. Um, we've talked about board of directors, we've talked about individual donors, we've talked about grants, which was yesterday. And today in our part four funding streams that you can activate, we are going to focus on corporate sponsorship. So corporate sponsorships are different from grants. So grants are from foundations and organizations who have set up a certain amount of their profit or money to support an organization. And so it can either be a private foundation, through like a family private foundation, it can be a community foundation, it can be through the government. But when we talk about corporate sponsorship, these are for-profit business who also want to do good. And so for them, they have these that I like to call business with impact model, where yes, they're for-profit and that is 99.9% .9 of their priority and goal is to make money through the services or products that they render to the society. But on the flip side, they have a certain percentage that every single year they would like to give to support specific non-profit organizations that is in alignment with who or what they care about or the location that they serve. And so in this instance, these corporate entities they want to give you a percentage of their profit. They don't have the time or energy to have a non-profit or to set up a non-profit to do the good they want to do, but they still want to, con to contribute and do good in the society. And so that's why most of them have what they call corporate social responsibility. And this is how they partner with individuals or non-profit organizations who already have established their non-profit and they just need some funding. And so they come on board as partners and supporters. They might not do the work, but they can provide you with the funding to be able to do the work. And so now that we're clear about who corporate sponsors are, how can you activate this funder stream? And so what I like to tell my client is to say, look around you. Look at all the brands that you love. Think of everything that you have to do for your nonprofit, your organization, your project. Most of the time, you need to buy some things. You need some services. You need some products. Is it possible for you to look around you and look for whether regional small businesses or international corporations that actually provide those things, whether it's a service or a product? 
and approach them to say, you know what? We know that you care about the community. We know that you're trying to make a difference as well. And we know that your mission and your objective is to be able to serve this location or this population. Will you be willing to partner with us for good and help us by donating this percentage of this product or service to our organization? We serve those people that may not be able to afford it. And through your partnership, this is going to help us make a difference and help us to help this community or this location or this population that you care about. And so that's one way that you can look at, at it. So that's what we call in-kind donations. Sometimes for a non-profit, it's not every time that you need cash in terms of money to be donated to your organization. At the end of the day, there might be some things in your budget where maybe they are non-perishable that require some services or products that other organizations, other companies that are for profit can offer to you either at a discount or give it to you for free. And so that's one way that you can bring forth corporate sponsorship to support the work that you do and ensure that they help you in being able to um, make the difference that you want to make in that community. Another thing that you can do beyond just asking for in-kind donation like product and services is also asking for money. And so different for-profit or corporations have their own like charitable giving aspect of them. And so usually sometimes they have specific time that they call for applications. Sometimes um, it's year round, what we call rolling. And so depending on how that is set up, and if you meet the criteria, like I said, every funder, whether it's a corporate sponsor or true grants, they have their own specific objective. They have their own specific area of focus or, or, or the goals that they want to accomplish. And so you need to still do your due diligence to say, OK, is this corporate sponsor or this potential corporate sponsor, are they in alignment with what we do? Do they serve the same population or do they care about the population that we care about? Do they care about the community or the location that we care about as well? And so if you can figure this out and know that and do your research on them, then the chance of getting this corporate sponsorship will also be very, very high for you. And so it's very essential that you take the time to really find out more about the corporate partners before you just shoot your shot. Just make sure that you are in alignment with who they serve, the location that they say they want to serve because just because a corporate um, sponsorship exists does not mean that it is the right one for you every single time and so you need to really take the time to do your due diligence to say okay do they are they for us what kind of organization are they sponsor what kind of project do they sponsor what kind of populations do they care about and once you can figure that out it makes the world a better place and then the question you may be thinking of is like okay but what is the value to them what is the benefit the truth of the matter is a lot of corporate sponsors they actually benefit a lot like indirectly or directly from partnering with a non-profit and an organization like yours so i like to give like two examples so one is amazon so i am an amazon fan i have amazon prime and one of the reasons why it's harder for me to stop that membership, even though sometimes like it's like, why do I have this? It's because one of the things that sold me on them more than three years ago was the advert I saw on TV where every single year Amazon donates more than like fifty million dollars to um a particular non profit organization to feed the children. And so that stuck in my head. So every time when I need to buy something, when I need to get a product that I need, like the first thing that comes to my mind is Amazon. Why? Because I know that whether it's 1%, whether it's 0.1% of whatever I'm paying Amazon, it's indirectly going to help the organizations that works with children that are hungry and don't have the families that don't have enough to meet their um, needs in terms of like food and shelter and things like that. And so that's one of the things that has stuck with me over and over again. And so that way I'm able to justify to myself that, you know what, it's okay to still keep this prime membership because I know that at least a tiny portion of what I'm giving to Amazon is going to this nonprofit organization. So, and then imagine like Amazon uses it most of this time to advertise. And so think of somebody that cares as an individual that cares about children or ensuring that hunger is not a problem and things like that. And when they hear this message, it attracts them to Amazon. So Amazon is able to position themselves, not just to people that need their services, but people that want it, that maybe they might be on the fence. But because of this partnership that they have with this nonprofit organization, those people have moved over to be willing to now want the product and services that Amazon provides for them as well. So that's one example. Another example that I really like is um, 
a car company called Subaru and this organize this company also they have three specific nonprofits that they donate a percentage of their funding to and they've given millions and billions of dollars to them as well and so when i'm thinking of buying a car like if i want a new car the first thing that will come to my head is that brand as well why because they have a business with impact model they are not yes they are strictly for for profit but they know that a portion of whatever profit they're making is going to serve those non-profit organization and the population and the community that those organizations serve and so when you are thinking about partnership and you're not sure let's say you're just trying to approach a corporate partner that doesn't have a um, business with impact model or does not already have a corporate sponsorship attempt then you can raise that up so you can pitch that to them to say i see what you're trying to do in the society imagine if we partner together and give us a percentage of this in-kind donation or you give us this money monthly or quarterly this is what it can do for your brand you can use it to tell people and share with them that you're not just for profit but you care about the community you care about the population and this is how you're doing by partnering with our organizations or organizations like us through what you give to us and invest in our product and our program and so if you can do something like that it's going to really help you and so that's one way that a corporate sponsor can benefit from giving to your work and being partners and supporters of the work that you're trying to do in the community and so i hope that that was really helpful to you as you can as you continue to keep to think about how can you raise support how can you raise funding for your organization corporate sponsorship it's even faster than getting grants like usually based on the past work i've done with clients it takes about four to eight weeks at like for you to get those um, corporate sponsors from sending the application in or sending the pitch in to receiving the donation or partnership or support as well and so corporate sponsors can be something that you can activate and guess what irrespective of the country or the continent you are in the world there are always going to be businesses and it's all about you being willing to be that champion and going to speak and identifying those ones that are right for your organization and then going to have this conversation to help to support the work that you do and so my challenge for you today is to take some time and look within five to ten mile radius of where you live i don't even want you to think internationally or regionally or nationally now in the city or state that you are in can you identify at least up to 20 potential corporate sponsors whether for in cash whether for in-kind donation like service or product or for cash donation like money can you identify at least 25 of these people whether or not they have a corporate sponsorship plan already can you create a way that you can pitch to them and tell them that you know what this is what we do we are for good we see that our mission and our vision align we would love for you to join us and partner with us for good can you invest in this non-profit by donating a portion of your product or giving us a percentage of these product or services that we need that we need to use to help people and to make a difference for the life of those that we serve and those that we help if you can do this and like i said it might be scary in the beginning but i promise you more often than not you're going to get yes than no but a lot of us we don't take the time to ask because we're really afraid we think that oh we are automatically going to get a no but that is not the case the chance of you getting a yes is way way higher than you getting a no and even if you get a no this is practice think of it as practice the more you do that the better you get and i'm going to hang this with an example about kfc for most of you you know um, this organization they sell chicken it's a fast food restaurant right and based on what has been written about the founder of kfc he said he asked more than 1,000 times, 1,009 times before he finally got a yes from somebody willing to invest in him to even use his recipe to develop what we now know and love as KFC right now. So imagine if this founder of this KFC have not kept going on. And I want you to think of no as next opportunity. Don't ever allow a no to stop you. Don't ever allow a no to depress you and think that, oh, nobody cares. There are people out there who want to support your work, who want to help you. Corporations as well, not just individuals. But you have to be willing to do the work. You have to be willing to 
move from failure to failure without losing your enthusiasm, without losing your motivation. And you have to remember what you're fighting for. You're not fighting, you're not acting on behalf of yourself. You're acting on behalf of these people who might be voiceless, who might be hopeless, who might be helpless, who may not have the voice or the platform to ask for themselves. So once you can take yourself out of the equation, once you stop thinking about yourself and you start thinking about your mission, your vision, the families that are going to be affected, the children, the youth, the communities that are going to be affected. If you don't do your part by even attempting to hack, things are going to move on faster for you. So I highly encourage you to do and take up this challenge and do it. So identify 10, 20 to 25 potential businesses that you can talk to, who you can pitch to, to say, I want you to partner with us for good this year. Our mission, our vision this year is to help 500 families, 500 youths, 500 children, whatever it is. To, 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 and we want you to support this work. And this is how you can help us. We identify you as somebody, as an organization that would love to partner with our mission, our vision, our objective, our in alignment. We know that you care about this community or about this population. Will you be willing to partner with us for good? This is how you can do it. By either donating cash or in-kind donation of product or services. And so it can be as simple as that. And so don't be afraid. Don't postpone it. Have the conversation now. The best time to start is right now. Right now. Right now is the best time to start. And so don't be scared. You have all you need. And you are made for, for greater and greater things. And the what you're looking for, which is funding, fully funding your budget, is on the other side of fear. And so I highly encourage you to die to fear and take up that courage and go hacks. Go fight on behalf of those people. Fight for what you want to see, the vision of the future you see for the population that you're serving or the community that you're serving. And if you need help, if you need assistance, as always, feel free to reach out to us like we're just a DM away. And also, I have some free trainings, free classes that are available. Go to the link in the bio and click and click on learn more about TFM Academy and you'll be able to sign up for some of these free classes. Also, next month, April 5th, by 12 p.m. Central Time, which will be 6.30 p.m. West African Time, there is a free masterclass called the Fully Funded Plan. And I really believe that it's going to be helpful to you. You have to show up live. If not, you have to pay a fee for the replay. But go to the link and go sign up. And until next time, keep doing good. I'll be back tomorrow again. And have a wonderful day.